Hello gorgeous, it is hosting season. Stay until the very end to get everything. Subscribe and click the bell, it's totally free. Also sign up to my newsletter link below and follow me on LDK at Gia G Dixon where I post regularly style and beauty. And with all of these holiday events and parties, here are some gift ideas to give the host. Sometimes you may have not seen someone for a long time, whether it's a family member or a friend who's hosting you over for the holidays or someone who's completely new into your circle and you want to make them feel welcome with a wonderful hosting gift especially if they're hosting you for the first for the first time i think it's always good to never show up empty-handed even though if you're seeing them for the thousandth time first things first is a vase why a vase why not flowers the etiquette around giving gifts i'm an etiquette consultant by the way founder of dixonetiquette.com you can check out the links below after this it's important to note that when you are gifting flowers you're gifting more work especially a host who's trying to keep on top of all the cooking all the catering whatever the situation is all the guests and presenting themselves well for you being in their home when you gift flowers make sure that it comes with a vase or you can simply just gift a vase a way to gift a vase is by having something in it it could be dried flowers i'll have dried flowers linked below you can choose from you can pick and mix and match all the bouquets and build floral arrangement you like next is chocolate it's a wonderful gift to present someone with food or drink as long as you don't expect them to eat it in front of you that day and also do not do not do not do not bring wine as a gift first off everyone and their mom thinks that they're a wine expert when they're not that's perfectly okay and sometimes people can only afford a two buck chuck so i personally like to steer clear of wine if you do offer someone a glass of wine do not bring it up later because they might have wines paired with the meal that they have presented you with during that dinner they thought ahead of time when they made this meal when they went to the grocery store and oh this is going to pair well with this for the second course this is going to pair well with this for dessert they're going to have this so don't ever assume that they're gonna present your wine unless it is a better match for what they were cooking they will decide that not you and as a guest you do not bring it up make sure that other people don't bring it up during the dinner and they say oh didn't someone else bring a wine make sure you change the subject if they do say that and say oh no it's okay don't worry this wine is lovely thank you so much don't disparage that person in front of them either change the subject just shift it over to something else you don't want to make people feel like you're correcting them or criticizing because impolite to make people feel uncomfortable and the whole point of etiquette is to make everyone feel included, make everyone showcase their character in the best light possible. The shorter amount of time you make people feel comfortable, the better. If you bring any type of dessert, do not expect for it to be presented afterward because it might mess with the palate, especially curated a dinner for you that they really want to present, that, that they're really good at cooking and they really know that you're gonna love this. Give them the chocolates for later. And if I do give someone chocolates, they usually are from abroad. Like if I currently visited Denmark, I'll have extra chocolates from like this royal company that people love and that's known for like their version of godiva next is a coffee table book you know their taste or if you have one that's not your taste and you call them ahead and say hey i have this book and you take a picture of it and you say i don't know if you're interested in do you want it then if you're close friends that's perfectly fine but if you're meeting someone for the first time i feel like you have to know someone a bit more to give them a coffee table book or if you know someone's super into fashion you can get them a fashion coffee table book or vegan cooking whatever they're interested in they like motorcycles there's a coffee book for everything and i think it's a wonderful gift especially if you already have a taste of who the person is next is a cookbook so if you know someone who loves to cook or if they're getting into cooking of a certain cuisine you know someone is super into making pastries you can give them a pastry book because there are not enough pastry books in the world pastries are a wonderful gift to the world let's just get that out there there are also so many pastries to master them all when you'd have to dedicate your life to that there are so many different types of cookbooks out there next is olive oil i feel like you can never have enough olive oil or just any type of oil in general grapeseed oil truffle oil my friends like to go to this mushroom festival the dogs will hunt for truffles and then you give them a treat and it's really cool because there are all these meals that they cook different types of mushrooms and getting those tastes and those oils the oils are like wine where they can be very very expensive for me, I like to stick to a good olive oil and especially if it's in a beautiful bottle where you've traveled somewhere recently. I live here in California, here in the Hollywood Hills. We have beautiful little shops that are dedicated only toward that one thing that they specialize in. Those are always gonna have some really high quality olive oils and everybody uses olive oil, especially when they cook. Next 
is a sculpture or a candle. So there are sculpture candles. Putting two things in one because I have been seeing some really Hellenic, uh, beautiful Greek style sculptures in candle form. And it's something that you want to keep as a sculpture and never use. But if you do use it, you can use the head, like the head up, and then it will melt until the neck. And I think that looks really cool too. Candles come in so many scents. And if you know someone has a penchant for a very specific scent, so like I love rose, I love jasmine, I love insert freesia, insert flower here. So a lilac. Next is a serving dish. So if you know someone loves to host, loves to cook, or even if they don't love to cook and they have a caterer and you know they love hosting and they really value that, you can see when someone loves presenting people with getting together and good social gatherings. That's a really wonderful skill or skill and gift to have and talent. Uh, probably use a lot of plates. They probably are going to have a lot of food out it's a beautiful touch it can be timeless and classic or it can be totally artisanal and unique and one of a kind i personally like to give a little bit of both depending on whom i'm giving it to or also depending on time of year that it is so if it's like mother's day i'll get something that's more pastel more florally more uh feminine a holiday gift then i'm gonna get something that's a bit more loud it could be silver it could be bright colors it could be flamboyant in shape depending on the stoneware depending on the make that is also something to consider. Next are bathroom dispensers for soap or lotion. So if you notice someone has really good quality soap, you can get them the lotion to pair with it. Or you can, uh, if someone has a soap container that is the one that you buy from the store that has the liquid soap, then you can get them the container itself or you can get one with soap or lotion in it in a set. Those are always beautiful. And or if you know someone who has bar soap, then you can get like a bar soap holder, beautiful hand towel as a gift and say, this reminded me of you in your bathroom. It's so stunning and lovely. If someone gifted me that, I would be very, very grateful. And th the fact that they're thinking about me at all is wonderful. Next is a little frame. So it doesn't have to be a big decadent frame or mirror with gilded uh, edging and Rococo filigree and all this beautiful coving design. Now, it can be as simple as a little metal frame or it could be silver if, if you really wanna go all out or it could be simple as wood. I think wood really warms up the home and the house with all these different textures, especially lighter case woods or if you have dark woods, it's a bit more aggressive. It's beautiful and it's rich, but I think lighter woods are something that are very much family friendly and homey. It's also something that can commemorate memories with that person or with their family. Actually, if a frame is really high quality they will want to keep it forever if they know that it's silver plated or it's full silver if you are gifting to something to your mother gifting something to your mother-in-law or your sister-in-law it's something that you know they will use or find a reason to use it because it's so precious next is a work of art you can use a work of art that is printed online i'll have a website below that you can check out or you can support a local artist or an artist online from a or small business simply by their prints or you can actually make one yourself. I personally am an artist. People always ask me in videos, what are these works of art? Who did them? And I did. <laughs> People typically like to decorate their house with a huge piece of art so that it does all of the talking rather than a bunch of little small cluttery ones because it breaks up the room and it makes it look, uh, it distracts from the light from the overall picture. So if you can give a little small piece of art that's meant for their desk or for the bathroom or for a smaller room, then that's something extra special. Um, I like something for my desk for my office and there's like a, a dedicated area in my office for smaller things and it's a very nice touch. Arts is always, always appreciated by me. Even if it's like a cutout from a magazine that's put thoughtfully and matted into a work of, uh, into a frame, that is a wonderful gift. Next are board games. So if you know this person to be hosting they most likely are not just hosting you they're probably hosting a group of people if you do see them at social gatherings and board games are a wonderful way to get people together whether it's in the middle of the day and have an activity during the holidays while everything is relaxed everything is closed outside then uh, it's also a nice way to get your friends if like your friends are drinking and after a nice night of going out to three different places you kind of have like a mixer at your friend's place and you guys get to get together like my friends and i play uno and we play blockus and like all these little really simple like puzzle games that you don't really have to think and it's fun and it's competitive and in a friendly way and you guys kind of get together and bond as opposed to standing at a bar spending a lot on food and uh whatchamacallit, drinks, and you guys can really get to know each other and be very huge. For those of you who don't know, I 
lived in Denmark for a couple of years and the uh, hugelit, you want to be extra hugelit, like put your phone devices, put your devices away, turn on the candles, have a blanket. There's no translation for it. The best translation is cozy, but more down to earth than that. You don't have any technology and you're very much in the spirit of togetherness. Next is a teapot. So if you know someone likes to make tea a lot, you can add to their self-care routine by getting them a really decadent teapot or cafetiere. So if you're not someone, if you know this person doesn't drink tea and they're more of a coffee person, you can get them something that is not as like their simple coffee maker or their simple cafetiere that you see they use. If you see them using one that is particularly old or getting old, then you can get them a new one that is very pristine and and there are so many classic style ones that I think are really timeless to tie in the rest of their house or lift up. Next are souvenir coasters. If you travel a lot or if you went recently to somewhere that was interesting, I like to get little souvenirs for family members and something that's easy to pack away is a coaster. So I received coasters from Myanmar from a family member. And, and they are so beautiful. They're made out of this really dark wood and it was made by a local artisan. And there's nothing more special than having a taste of being abroad without spending on thousands on a ticket and hotel and actually seeing the place. It's like a little special thing just for you. And for that person, and it, it truly makes them feel special when you have these little things. I am freezing right now. I am literally shivering. I have so many more gift guides coming out for her, for him stocking stuffers and last minute gifts so subscribe and click the bell to make sure that you do not miss them also check out my full blog post link below of hosting gifts there are way more gift ideas in there that i could not put into this video because this video would be 45 minutes long so be sure to check them out and check out the links in the description along with related posts and my other gift guides i think they will absolutely help you through the holidays and um, make your season of gifting even easier. I hope you liked this. Thank you so much for watching. It was absolutely fun making this. Give this a like so more people can find this and gift. Also sign up to my newsletter link below and follow me on LDK at Gia G. Dixon where I post regularly style and beauty. And you can also visit my blog at GiaGDixon.com. Subscribe and click the bell. It's totally free. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you later.